Hi guys, welcome to another Kicking It With Quran episode. Today we have Kylie Ying from MIT, who's a master's student. Welcome, Kylie. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time. Um, you know, I, I'm super excited to talk to you because you know I'm a big racing fan, and mm -hmm. I'm a car fan. And you're working on something really, really cool. So why don't you introduce yourself uh, for our audience, what you do, uh, and what your research uh, en encapsulates. Yeah, so I, as Karan said, I am a master's student at MIT. I'm studying computer science right now. And I'm on MIT Driverless's planning and controls team. So MIT Driverless is a student-run uh, club that's just passionate about autonomous racing. And we're currently participating in two really cool competitions. One of them is IAC, Indie Autonomous Challenge, where our car is going head to head against other people's autonomous cars around the Indy racetrack, which is super cool. And then our other competition that we've been competing in is called Robo Race, where we have a single car on a track and it goes around the track time trial um, version, I guess. And the twist here is that there are objects from the metaverse that start popping up. And this metaverse consists of virtual obstacles and virtual rewards. So if we hit an obstacle, it deducts some time or it adds some time to our total time. If we run into a reward, then that's good for us and it deducts our time. And planning and controls just deals with like, where the car is going and how do we, you know, how do we come up with the best path to go like the minimal time and avoid all these things or collect all the rewards. And yeah, controls is just getting the car to follow that path. Wow. So, so there's, so there's two separate uh, challenges or races, so to speak. One is actually in the physical world, which is you're essentially uh, on the IndyCar track. Uh, and, and I believe it's like 20 laps, right? And then there's like prize money to it as well. Uh, yeah, and then the, yeah. The I think the winning team is like, like a million dollar prize or something like wow. that, which is okay. substantial. Is, it, is, is that being competed across multiple different universities or like how is, who are the competitors? Like what's the, what's the, um, I guess, what are the teams like? Yeah. So I, I think that it is, um, I mean, I think it's international. I think there are teams all over the world that are getting ready to race in this competition later this fall. But the cool thing is lots yeah. of different people are doing it. And yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, at the end of the day, the, the goal of this uh, is to really develop ADAS systems. Is that right? Right, right. I mean, what makes this competition so interesting, it's the first ever like multi-agent, which means that there's just a bunch of cars on the track racing at the same time um high speed race ever like being held in like the US right and there are so many challenges that come with such a race that if you can solve these challenges then like commercial it, it translates over right to commercial mm -hmm. autonomous vehicles and for example one of these things is like i know that in perception usually when you're driving your car 30 miles an hour 60 miles an hour I mean, you have more time to just kind of locate things around you and see what's around you and predict other people's moves. Now, when you're driving close to 150 miles an hour, I don't know, 200 miles an hour, I don't think we'll, I don't know if anybody will get there, but when you're driving close, I know, <laughs> when you're driving close to those speeds, it's a lot, it's a different game. And there are, there are different algorithms that you need to come up with to figure this stuff out under that time pressure. Because now suddenly, you know, you have so much less time to predict where somebody pulling up around you is going to be in the next second. It's also it's also other cars, right, doing the same at the same time, right? I mean, in a, in a normal sort of, you know, real world scenario, you're driving, you know, kind of, you know, 40, 50 miles an hour and there's like, you know, cats and dogs and pedestrians and cars, like other cars, like, a, like in, a, in a set defined path, right? But then in a racetrack, it's basically you're 200 miles an hour. There's a bunch of other cars doing the same, essentially trying to overtake you, cut off your lines, et cetera, right? Like, why is this problem so hard? Yeah, so it, it's just a hard, it's just such a difficult problem because of the fact that so many people are trying to overtake you or like everybody has the goal of winning, mm -hmm. right? And every single team is going to be 
slightly more aggressive or slightly more, you know, they, they everybody has their own tactics. And it's kind of like asking the difference, like, I, you know, I have my driver's license, I drive around on the road. What's the challenge of me going to, you know, the Indy 500 racetrack and getting into a race car and driving, you know, in a NASCAR race or something, right? And so obviously, one of them I'm not scared to do, and the other one I'd be terrified. <laughs> um, and that's kind of the essence of this autonomous race here. It's if you can figure out this multi-agent high-speed race, mm. then it makes driving on a road, I don't want to say simpler, but it, it solves some of the big challenges. Right. It, I don't want to say solves either. I just, like, it just... Well, it progresses. It makes it, progresses it simplifies the problem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you're solving you're solving one problem in this space, and then it translates over to solving problems in this other space. Got it. Got it. Okay. And so, uh, you know, I mean, I've been speaking to lots of different types of companies that are kind of you know they've got their own algorithms. They've got large GPU clusters because a lot of this is very computationally intensive. And plus, like, you know, what I've heard is that, or at least my understanding is that you need lots and lots of hours of driving and, and content and data to be able to train some of these large models, right? So, like, how are you getting that data? Like, are you, you know, well, first of all, when is this race? So, like, you know, I'm guessing you guys have like a deadline to get right. something cleaned and, and ready for the race, right? So, how, mm -hmm. you, what are you guys doing, uh, you know, from a sort of a start to end perspective? Yeah, so um, to answer the, the easiest question first, the race is, I believe, October 23rd this year, so 2021. And um, and that gives us a little bit of time to prepare. We've been preparing since the fall, um, parallel to our other competition. In the, in the world of people actually getting into cars and cars driving autonomously, you need tons of data because you need to hit those edge cases, right? Like 99.99% of the time, if you're driving on the road, everybody's going to stay in their own lane. People are going to follow the rules. But it's that 0.01% of the time when like an 18-wheeler starts to swerve into your lane, like what do you do, right? And that's that's where this, um, that's where this data is super valuable of, you know, tons of mileage. It's those edge cases that you want to cover to make sure that, your car can protect the human in the car. Now, if we look at our, our purpose, um, our goal of racing specifically, now I'm sure that perception is probably using some sort of neural net algorithm, machine learning, where they do have to train on a bunch of stuff. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure um, what they've been up to. I haven't been like up to speed on perception. But as for planning and controls, there is actually not significant amount of data that we need. And the reason for that is because, um, I'll start with controls. So controls is essentially, you have your car and you have like a path that you wanna follow. How do you translate, how do you actually get that car to follow the path, right? As a human, we steer and we press on the gas or the brakes. And so these are the exact, these are the exact like two inputs that we need our algorithms to figure out. And in controls, there isn't really too much data involved that we need in order to figure this out because we have, like there are published algorithms and models out there already. So for example, um, you might've heard of something called the bicycle model. And this is basically a simplification of a car's dynamics. So if you turn the wheel X degrees to the left, then this model will say, hey, given some time step, it'll likely be at this specific coordinate in the future. Again, thanks again, Kylie, and we'll catch you next time on another episode of Kicking Out with Ron. Thanks, guys.